Hey guys, it's JTech here. Show you a tutorial on virtual machines on uh, Chromebooks. I currently have a Samsung Galaxy Chromebook released in this year, 2020. You can see I have an Intel i5 with uh, 8 gigs of RAM. I am on the latest stable version of Chrome OS. I took it off of beta and dev just to make sure it would work across most Chromebooks. Uh, from what I read online, you do have to have Chrome version 4.14, I believe. I uh, don't know if that really matters anymore since it's already built into all the stable versions. But let's get started. I do have the list here of all the things we need to do in order to get this squared away, up and running, whether you're running Linux Mint, Elementary OS, anything like that. Uh, first thing we need to do is install the Linux beta through Chrome OS settings. So we're going to go down here to your little bottom right clock bar, click on settings, Linux beta. We're going to turn this on and you want to select a size that will vary depending on what you're doing with the operating system. I'm going to start with just 40 since I'm just doing you know testing and everything. Next thing you want to do is once this is done, the terminal window pops up. Like every Linux system ever, you always want to update and upgrade the operating system through the terminal itself. So for Crostini, we will do it through this terminal that pops up in a minute. And then once you go into Linux Mint, you will want to do that upgrade as well uh, through their terminal because it's two separate operating systems. And if for some reason this upgrade crashes on you, which it has a couple times for me in the past, it'll tell you exactly what to do in the terminal when you try to do the upgrade again. It will give you the command to type in. Uh, if for some reason it doesn't work, you can always just delete the Linux by saying turn it off in the settings and then just turn it back on again. So we're going to do sudo apt update. and sudo apt upgrade and then yes we'll skip ahead to when this is done Okay, now that that is done updating and upgrading, we do want to restart the Linux system. So you're going to go down here where the terminal window is, you're going to right click it, you're going to shut down Linux. We're going to bring that back up. There we go. Now you also want to make sure, uh, depending on what you're doing in Linux, I know, I know there's still a lot of you know, graphics issues when playing games, etc. Uh, but you're going to want to enable this in the Chrome flags. Uh, Christine GPU support. This is usually, by default, it's off. Uh, but if you enable it, you will have to restart the Chrome system. So don't do it while you're in installing Linux or you have something downloading in the background because it will completely stop that process. So do this after you already get the upgrades done, etc. Restart by hitting the little restart button that appears. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the command uh, for installing all the virtual man uh, machine manager. This is the program that you're going to be using to install all the ISO files and for actually starting your virtual machine up and using it. Um, this command itself was all put together and found on Chrome Unboxed. Uh, a lot of my information came from that versus some Reddit pages and some other uh, web pages that I had to put together for some issues I ran into since it wasn't all in one spot. I'm just kind of packaging it all together for you guys. So this will be in the description so you can just copy and paste. We're going to go in here, right click to paste in here and hit enter. And we'll skip ahead till this is done as well because this might take a few minutes. All 
All right, now that that's done, uh, the next step is you do want to make yourself a user. Uh, if you do not, you will get a connection error when trying to start the program. So the next thing you want to do is type this in for step number five. You're going to do sudo add user. Your username is what you see right there before the, uh, the at penguin sign. It is what you created when you were setting up Linux. Next thing you want to do is you want to move the ISO file from the operating system. Usually it's on the download folder where you uh, download it and you want to move it into the Linux files. So you're going to open up the files app that's built into Chrome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move elementary OS since I like the looks of it a little bit better. You go into Linux files and just paste it. Next thing we're going to want to do is down here in your app drawer, you're going to have a Linux app section now. So under Linux apps, you're going to see Virtual Machine Manager. You're going to go ahead and open that up. All right, so there should be no error here. Everything looks good. The next thing we're going to do is click this new button, or you can go up to File, New Virtual Machine. You're going to select a local installed media because we have ISO files. Browse for them. Browse local. If you don't see it here, you can always go in other, other locations here, but it should be listed. We're going to uncheck automatically detect because it's not going to find it. We're going to just do a generic selection. This depends on what you're doing with the operating system. Uh, if I'm going to be using another operating system, I'm probably going to be using it for the entire project I'm working on, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to literally allo allocate um, everything that's I can without really slowing the background down. Storage, I don't need much on this. You know, you can go up to whatever you need. It depends on what you're doing once again. Do 30. If it asks this, just hit yes. Go full screen over here. All right, so we are at the install screen for elementary OS. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to do try. Elementary does take a good amount of time to install if you are doing the update while install. Um, so for this, I would just do the try to show that it's working. There we have it. We are in. You go up to here and you can change the uh, resolution to match your screen, or at least do 1080 so it's not black boxed on the side. And there we go. So depending on what settings you set when you are installing this, you might have a black cursor. Uh, this is actually the first time I've had a black cursor on elementary OS, but it happens on Mint every single time. 
Uh, I've messed around with the settings a lot, reinstalling Mint over and over and over and over and over again, and I have not fixed it yet, uh, but it's still usable. It's just kind of annoying. Um, one of the things I'll do, I list in the description, and that is... When starting it up, you go to Display, Spice, uh, do Copy Local Key Map if for some reason your keyboard's messed up inside the operating system itself. And then under the video QXL, I set it to Vertio, uh, however you set it, so I can turn on 3D acceleration. That stops a lot of the errors that I was getting in Linux Mint when trying to set my 1080p or higher resolution. We're going to just go shut down. I'm right, show you guys in the settings real quick. When you do this setup, and you select whatever you're doing, you want to click this right here, Customize Configuration Before Install. When you have all these options ahead of you, under VQ XL and then 3D acceleration, that's the option I was talking about. And then you just hit begin installation that way. Um, there's also other options that you can mess around in there. Um, I didn't see much difference, but it all depends on what you're doing inside the operating system itself. Um, I did have an issue that happened at the end where I was installing and deleting so many operating systems, trying different settings, etc., that it kept eating away at the space even though I was deleting them. When you delete something, you have to restart Linux by going into the bottom right when you have a terminal open and clicking that shutdown button. If you don't do that after you delete something and you try to go make another one, that space is still going to be used up. Um, I tried using one of the file managers that I like on here, but it didn't have much of an effect, but it's still useful to have. So if you want a file manager in Linux without having to like open another operating system, I recommend PC Man FM. It had a GUI kind of like Nautilus, but Nautilus gave me some errors. So in this one, uh, you can still see the root directory and everything that's on your Linux partition without leaving Chrome OS. Anyway, guys, that is every virtual machine, uh, how you would install it. I haven't tested Windows. Other people have. Uh, once again, I said I don't really need to do Windows. It's just too heavy of an operating system. But uh, if you have any questions, just comment down below. Let me know. I'll try to respond to them. And uh, enjoy VMing, guys.